was really great to see so many fan arts, so many letters, so many fiction, yeah. um, cosplays, cosplays. The reactions were fantastic, way be beyond our previous expectations. It was impossible to expect a, a huge community like this and so passionate fans yeah, and it, it, it's great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> we started the project by making the game we wanted to make for ourselves, but at the end it's really making a game for the players because it's no, that's what's important. Uh, so welcome to the dev commentary of Life is Strange. We're really happy to, to be there and talk about the game. Uh, thank you for watching. Thanks. I'm Raoul Barbet, one of the co-game directors of the game. And I'm Michel Corr, the other co-game director of the game. We, we are two game directors working on, the, on one project, so it, it is really interesting to, to work that way. Yeah. Uh, it can be hard sometimes, but I think it's... It's a really interesting creative process because we can challenge each other on a lot of yeah. aspects and, and find always the better solution for what's best for yeah. the game. If only Michel or Raoul was directing the game, the game would have been really different. They, they both know uh, how to make a game. Like they, They're not stuck in their uh, field of expertise. They know a lot of things about each department and they had this direct contact with the teams. I'm more from the audiovisual and uh, movie uh, scene, so I, I was in charge of all the, the cameras with the, the camera team. I work a lot with the sound design team also, with the music. And um, myself, um, since I'm from an um, illustration background, I was my specialties were more on the art direction. and. Uh, Later, um, for this game, I'm starting to work way more with the narrative team and, and the voice uh, recording sessions. It was, it was cool because they had, uh, they had a similar vision uh, for the game, so we didn't have a yes from one and a no from the other. And actually, Michelle and Raoul are in the game when you think about it because so there are two game directors, so we have a contraction which, which is Michelle. But uh, there is, if you put it the other way around, it's Raoul and Michel, so it's Rachel. I'm pretty sure they did on purpose. The idea behind the game was to, because we have both of us worked on Remember Me, and uh, there were some sequences in this game called the Memory Remixes, and uh, one of the founders, uh, Hervé Bonin, uh, uh, asked this small cartoon to, to, to think about a game with this kind of mechanism. Very quickly it came uh, the episodic adventure game because we wanted really to, to do something like that. There is uh, really a lot of good ways to, new ways to, interactive ways to tell stories. On an episodic format you have to make a lot of choice uh, for episode one because you won't be able to change after. Uh, a lot of assets have to be there in episode one. So the menu is one of uh, those assets. It was interesting because there was a lot of variations. We, we did a lot of tries of what we wanted to show in this menu. Uh, the idea is, was really to basically show the most important locations of the game. So we can we can see the, the Blackwell Academy on, on, on the top right. We can see the lighthouse. We can see the, the, the town of Arcadia Bay. We were really trying to give a sense of location and just showing like the, the game the game world with the menu. We really wanted to to make the player feel that all areas are connected and the menu is a great way to do that. One of the main uh, importance for us uh, for the game was to have a, a peaceful game with this sense of you can take your time and we, we wanted to reflect that from the menu so we, we worked on those small wind effects and the leaves that are going around and the, the nice and soft music. It was just when you start the game you should feel quite um, at peace and com comfortable. And, and even uh, when, when the menu evolves in each episode, there is sm so some small details that are changing. Like in, in for the menu for episode four, you have the, the, the beach whaled. That's this kind of details we wanted to to just add with the variations of the menu. The game takes place in, in Oregon, in the Pacific Northwest, in the United States. When I went back there in, on, on, on vacations, I've, I've seen a lot of places that really looks like what we did in the game. So I guess we... It was a really big job of references to be sure that everything was correct. Uh, but it, it's also something that's really exciting about making a game, that you have to, to look at everything and to reproduce reality and with, of course, our, our own lens and, and, and stylizations. But uh, we really wanted this to feel like being in Oregon. Sometimes people ask us if we choose to have a game in the United States for marketing, for selling the game. We, we knew that we were fans of 
like TV shows like Twin Peaks or X Files. They have those, those trees and the Pacific Northwest feeling. Uh, I think they are a great example of a, a small community uh, thinking that they, everybody knows each other and everybody is happy. But when you put something uh, inside this community, uh, it could be something supernatural. Uh, yeah. you, you discover uh, a lot more. And it's really a way to, to shift things around and to bring chaos and interesting variations on the, on the characters. And at the, in the end, Life is Strange is really a, a, a game and a story about the characters, about their lives. It's not a story about the sci-fi elements. The sci-fi elements are just for, uh, for us. They were just here to make, make things interesting.